Hello everyone and welcome back to Navigating the Road to Cyber Resiliency, a summit made possible by Dell Technologies. Jaspreet Singh is in the house, CEO of Druva. Good to see you face to face. Good morning, thank you for having me here. You, you, you bet, what's happening with Druva? Give us the update on the current state of data protection. It's, uh, it's great to see you. Uh, thank you for having me here. A lot is happening with, with data and data protection as we know it. Like, uh, as you see the world around us, there's a, there are many, many, many cyber threats uh, happening with different political scenarios, with different, uh, you know, different motivation by different uh, hacker groups or different intruders. And, and data is in the center of all of those things. Data is a center pinning focus of many uh, hackers and attackers and, and how you recover, how you safeguard data becomes an interesting factor for Druva. So we've been active and busy with, with all the cyber risks around us. Talk about this resilience piece in the recovery. Why is it getting so much traction right now? What's the focus? Why are people trying to figure this out? And what are they discovering as they look at the landscape for cyber resilience and cyber recovery? Absolutely. So look, last 30 years of security, uh, we have spent a, a humongous amount of effort trying to, to detect and prevent uh, threats happening, advanced threats, persistent threats happening uh, at the endpoint level, at the network level, at the application level. But uh, we all realize more and more that security incidents are more a race condition, right? Uh, one vulnerability left unaddressed, one application remains unpatched, one network has a plug hole, you know, uh, uh, the intruder comes in. When they come in, uh, the insider and intruder uh, are dominant the same, you know, same personality as they, it's, it's through a credential leak how the intruder came in, right? So as the race condition is met and the intruder comes in, uh, people haven't really thought through how the recovery piece holistically happens and how recovery happens in conjecture, in, 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 in confidence and in, in completely comparison with their security remediation, right? So cyber resiliency is all about how do you make sure recovery and security work together to make sure data and application are up and running in time and at scale. Okay, so we saw that you know, IDC had you in the market scape as a cyber recovery leader. I want to ask you a semi-tough semi question. There's, there's companies in the business that have pivoted mm -hmm. and said, okay, now we're in security. Mm -hmm. um, talk about your roots mm -hmm. in this space in terms of recovery. You keep talking recovery mm -hmm. and, and convince us that it's not just a sort of cybersecurity washing. Oh, absolutely, it's a great question. So uh, if you look at the holistic view of data prediction, what were the roots of Drova and, and many of the other domain, like uh, you can pretty much look at the market in, in sort of uh, historically in two big buckets, right? The one big bucket being, uh, can I buy software uh, to sort of, you know, deploy it myself, right? right. Uh, and, which, and you had many, many good companies doing a good software-based approach. And then the world thought, you know, can I buy hardware and software a little bit more integrated and have a better technology managing my data center and data holistically. And then he had many good examples, and Dell is a great example to managing integrated uh, software hardware approach to managing data at scale, right? But then what, when, when the equation is turning more and more to a security conversation, the security conversation, what is the toughest part of cybersecurity today? It's how you operationalize the tools. It's not buying one more tool. It's not getting one more alert. How are you going to holistically manage your risk better right. and operationalize better? So the world asks for a third choice, saying, can I, rather than buying hardware and software, can I buy a service model which has a better levers to operationalize my entire data posture or my security posture holistically? And that's been whole Druva's existence all throughout. You know, we, we launched the first cloud offering about 10 years ago, and we're consistently following and growing our footprint around a very SaaS-oriented way to manage data and manage all aspects of risk around it. And we're the only one pure play true to our cause and, and delivering customers the outcome they want and not one, of them, one more tool in the arsenal to manage more risk. Yeah. I remember in 2017 when you first came on, we actually just moved into the studio. Mm -hmm. um, it was early, you guys were early in cloud, and AWS mm -hmm. specifically, mm -hmm. and you guys just recently got an award for AWS Global uh, Storage Partner of the Year. Congratulations, also crossed 200 million in SaaS revenue. Mm -hmm. um, the cloud's a major part of what you guys do. Obviously now you've got distributed computing, you got on-premises and edge emerging, mm -hmm. <laughs> generative AI as hot as mm -hmm. could be, role of data is going to be critical. How are you guys differentiating yourself now uh, in this field? Because like Dave mentioned, it's kind of crowded. People are kind of pivoting and you know, washing this, that, and the other thing. But for the most part, it's a really focused market on the data protection, threat detection. It's all kind of coming together. 
What's your differentiation right now as you look at this next wave mm -hmm. of cloud and distributed computing? Absolutely. So, so most people think of cloud as a as sort of a, at least most in our space think of cloud as a technology sort of a you know a trend. We think of cloud as not just technology but also a business trend, right? People are not only buying cloud; they're buying the goodness of cloud, right? They're buying the goodness of cloud. Can I buy it just in time? Can I can I scale on demand as I go across the globe? Uh, can I can I predictively pay pay for a SLA? And more critically for security, can I pay for an SLA at the same price point across the globe? Right. That's the beauty of a model. We've scaled the business globally. We support the humongous amount of more regions. We did about six billion backups with you know more precision than anybody in the market. So our scale, our maturity. We added more and more certifications. Uh, we got FedRAMP certified and going through rigorous certification more and more. So the scale, maturity, and the offering to truly deliver a customer outcome. Uh, far more critical than just another tool is what we've been positioned after, and, and we've, we've scaled and matured this business more than anything. And yes, AI is a very, very interesting question because AI, um, more and more, the discussion around AI are discussions also centered around the data and the data architecture. And and, and I think AI helps in, in both the ways. Like your, your tasks of managing security and data often are yeah. extremely manual and extremely painful, and AI can definitely help in many, many areas. At the same time, a lot of general purpose AI deployment trust and require you to have a centralized data architecture, which is where cloud is also coming pretty you know, critical. Uh, Dave and I were talking on the intro around the title of this event, you know, navigating the road to cyber resilience, mm -hmm. and the word navigation prompts discovery. People have to discover what architecture, and you mentioned that. What is the discovery point right now for practitioners as they look at this next gen architecture because you want to set up for data as a competitive advantage, but also it's a competitive advantage that can be targeted, right? So fantastic. what are some of those discovery challenges? Yeah, it's a fantastic question. So, you know, majority of, if you have a CIO conversation, a CISO conversation, if you ask them, like, where have you been deploying your cyber resiliency practice? And they're going through a zero trust network effort, they're going to vulnerability management effort, right? But then if you pivot the conversation and say that that's great, but where is your biggest risk in the business, right? Uh, and then they would pivot to saying, hey, my biggest risk is my IP and, and potentially my customer contracts. Uh, or, you know, some of those, uh, if you are a pharma company, probably your critical research. Now, the, the, the conversation is, Mr. Customer, how do you differentiate your source code from third party source code? You know, how do you differentiate your contract with the third party contracts? How do you differentiate your research and the consent you have in the research than a third party research, right? So data is far more connected now than ever in the past, right? Uh, but then this is where true understanding of my data, what is my data comes into picture for understanding as the data gets more and more decentralized to your point as you deploy more cloud, yeah. more edge, more services, data management and data security has to get more and more centralized. So you have a single view of your data assets. You can then, once you have a single view, you can understand them better. You can then notify on, on things like breaches better and you can assess your risk a far more better. So the more distributed technology gets, the harder it is to keep it in sync. <laughs> Does AI help with this? You guys have AI solutions. You mentioned uh, you know, backups before, a lot of backups fail. Is AI going to say, hey, this backup failed, I'm going to be a systems of agency and actually take action and complete that backup. Where, do, how should we think about the real impact uh, on the experience of, of cyber resilience and recovery? It's a great point and we call it internally the AI of things, right? Like how do we, the simplistic task of, of managing your IT stack or your data stack can be managed through AI better, right? Like when, when mobile came into picture, right? Uh, there wasn't a brand new mobile company. Well, there were few, but broadly, almost everything we did from Salesforce to accessing application became more mobilized, right? Became better mobile friendly, mobile first approach happened, right? So now a lot of AI first approach happening across the market. What does it mean for uh, something like Drova, right? So the, the multiple factors on it, like how do we deliver value and what customers can do on our platform? How do we deliver value? To manage data, there are humongous amount of manual tasks around to your point, can you, can you pass through my logs? Can I, become, can, can I configure better policies? Can I handle better? And yes, we, we, we also launched uh, something called Drew AI. We were probably last to hybrid the first two results. We launched a, a, a successful co-pilot which could pass through your log as a customer, not any generic log, but your logs, and identify particular error codes in those logs, correlate with product documentation, and come back with recommendation. 
uh, and then you can even put into effects so a very elegant and beautiful model to manage your data. We also know on the other hand working through what do customers need from the data we are storing for them to power through their gen AI efforts within the company as well. So, so it's high fidelity data even though it might be messy because it's logs. <laughs> Is that, a, is that a, a, a rag that you've developed? Uh, is that a sort of a, some kind of custom domain specific LLM? What, what actually is that? So you have to, the LLMs for the broad range and, and they're many, they're, they're large, they're medium, they're small. Language models are coming in many forms and shape. The first of all, you have to understand what are the, uh, with the AI washing ha happening across the market, the first and fundamental problem to solve is what are the top four or five customer concerns which are possibly solved through AI? Right? That's number one thing. Otherwise, technology is of no use, right? Once you understand those problems deeply, then you're going to understand who, which system of record has the best knowledge of it. How do I bring that system online and connect it to an LLM, right? And then once you bring the system online, how the systems navigate and how do you manage security and privacy that widely pass on the customer information and there, there are probably series of algorithms and series of question and answers happening to resolve the outcome. Which information is okay to pass on and which API should be better shielded? What is the boundary of this language model to do? And they build all those hard level and then finally how do you test it? How do you make sure it is predictable? It doesn't hallucinate. How do you make sure there's a QA system around it? So there's a whole new thinking around the interface, uh, interface to an application will radically change with this new Gen AI approach. And as we thought through all over again in terms of how the things connect, how they test it, and how they deliver the actual outcome you want. So it's more than just a narrow app, right? It's, it sounds like an end-to-end -end system that you've embedded into your software. And the domain knowledge along with it saying, look, this is the right answer, the wrong answer, go look here, go prioritize this. And then the Gen AI takes over, and that's the beauty of the Gen AI model. It's a very text-oriented model to learn and grow mm -hmm. along with your needs and desires. Very cool. And this helps you up with your edge deployments and this distributed challenges. Oh, absolutely. So I think m m the broader the cloud gets to the edge and the other, other domains, the, the handling of data gets more error prone, which is where you know a lot of uh, AI oriented systems can, be, or can, can bring automation at the same time, can, yeah. can help sort of solve these long tail problems of managing information. So you and I sat down with uh, Travis Vihill from Dell last week. We're going to be running that later on. So you, know, you don't want to miss that. But Explain, just give us a little teaser. Why is that relationship so important uh, what, to customers? Like, why should they care? Well, any partnership has to be customer first, right? So if you look at, if you look at Dell's strategy around Apex and bringing everything Dell as a service to the end customer, uh, and if you look at Dell's core domain and DNA, it's, it's how, do, how do they actually do the best job in data center and to the cloud, but starting with data center and really, really offer best of breed services there, right? This, the customer has a need and desire to solve, have a best outcome in data center and a best outcome in cloud, right? So Dell and Drupal partnership brings these two best of breed solutions together in a core portfolio under the same umbrella of Apex services where the customer likes and desires and wants to consume more and more in. So ultimately customer has a better choice and wins overall. And you know, I, I actually said it's part of this program. It's not part of this program. It's actually on our YouTube channel already. We already released that. So you might want to go check out youtube.com slash siliconangle. Uh, and, 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 ch and check that out. So thanks for doing that, by the way, and I appreciate the, uh, the explanation. So look, you had a long history in this space. What are the things that customers should be thinking about that are, that are maybe non-obvious? You know, some of the threats that are coming, some of the, how can they anticipate? What would you recommend in terms of customers thinking about, all right, the next four or five years, these are the things that we have to be concerned about, whether it's, you know, the uncertainty around AI, obviously the threat actors are getting more and more sophisticated. Where would you point customers in the future so they can prepare? Yeah, so data, that's a, that's a phenomenal question. So data, I'm going to give an analogy to make my point here. Data is becoming so connected tissue in the organization. To me, when an incident happens, when, when something happens around a company, it's that last supper, you know, where everybody is leaning forward and, and you don't know who the last culprit was, but everybody's leaning forward to sort of, you know, pay attention to a particular conversation happening. Right? Right. Uh, a data incident pulls in uh, legal, pulls in privacy, pulls in security, pulls in infrastructure. A, a lot of people come in to, to understand what might be the impact of the organization. And today these departments don't talk to each other. There's no single, there's no, there's no 
single pane of glass to understand where was the first fault, who has the biggest impact and how it is going to all transcend. Uh, I think our recommendation to customers is that data and backups are not just a problem of a backup team. They, as, as investments have gone deeply into detection and prevention, they must go deeply into response and recovery. And these multiple silos organizations must talk to each other, right? The best thing could happen to a backup admin was to get fired, right? There was no, nothing ever good came off a backup admin, <laughs> right? So they never shared the data with anybody else. <laughs> so ev while all the single source of truth was happening in the backup data, there was never a confidence of discussion between security, privacy, and legal into that data and we bring that truth to life by making the system connected in the cloud, very actionable insights around the data. My final question for you on this segment is, as we've gotten to know you over the past six years on theCUBE and obviously 10 years when you st started the company, a lot's changed. The role of data and the importance certainly hasn't. Mm -hmm. If anything, it's become more uh, critical and more central to the value proposition for companies. Clearly, Genev AI points to that and we've been reporting on it at theCUBE. What's changing in data? As we look at down that road that we're going to be navigating the cyber resilience, what are the data challenges? What changes? Does the script flip? Does, because if you think about what we're envisioning here, you got to build governance from day one. You got to have all that stuff now integrated, not siloed. So you got to let data scale out. You got to need data that's going to be automated. So the role of data will be a developer construct, an application construct with Genev AI. So what's your vision on that road ahead for data, the role of data, what changes, what stays? Yeah, to, to understand data, that's a great question again. To understand data, we must look at, we must understand the growth of and portfolio of applications, right? And we also must understand the use of data or the threat on data, right? So when you started off, like when 10 years ago, when you built the first cloud offering, the, the, broad, the, the broad set of application we used to talk to an admin about or a, or, or a customer about like four to five dominant applications, right? Now it's down to like 35, 36 applications, which are like, the, call it the, the spring of all the SaaS <laughs> applications. It might be more too. <laughs> Probably more too, right? And now with the Gen AI, like uh, uh, anybody can write an app with text. Right? You don't have to be a programmer. You can write a text query and that becomes an application, right? With the new Amazon announcements and, and, and OpenAI announcements, right? So new apps are text, which means that uh, the application will change greatly and, and will transform data, right? Number two, uh, you've got to look at like 90% of all data produced the whole of this year was actually unstructured data. So data is not still, while applications are changing, data itself is a lot more unstructured, uh, coming from machines or humans, but unstructured data, semi-structured data to further more degree. Number three, uh, threats are evolving rapidly, right? Uh, uh, threats used to be dominantly focused on a malware or a, or a third party threat have coming in. Now we have uh, government issued orders, we have war crimes, we have insider threats, uh, we have systematic issues, we have APIs and triggers calling mass functions. So uh, data is obviously growing, but rapidly changing hands, rapidly changing application, and rapidly growing into more and more threats. So the job gets complex, but that's why we have Drupal. <laughs> you know, just be, we're out of time. I'd love to have you back and pick your brain a little bit about the, the investment climate, starting companies, you know, what you would advise. So thanks so much for coming on. Absolutely, thank you very much. All right, keep it right there. You're watching Navigating the Road to Cyber Resiliency. This is a summit made possible by Dell Technologies. Up next, we're going to talk to Herb Kelsey. He's the lead at Dell Technologies for a thing called Project Fort Zero, which was announced in May of 2023 at Dell Tech World. He's going to talk about the progress from date to date and specifically a real challenge. How do you operationalize zero trust? Keep it right there. <laughs>